Hi, Linda. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You can. Okay. Now say something. Oh, I think I just heard you. <laughs> okay, there. Oh, is that puppy? Uh, oh, did my boy. <laughs> my buddy. Okay, I'm hey, buddy. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, get um, down, buddy. Thank this you. This is the office hour for Oregon State University PDC Pro Fall 2022. This is call number eight. And the next lesson due is assignment eight on February 27th. Ta da! <laughs> How are you? Doing well. We're actually um, just, oh, so I have to say, I responded to an email and I didn't look at the date. You, you had changed the office hours, I think, from the last meeting. And I had just read the message. I'm like, oh, I hope you're okay. And then I realized, oh, wait, hold on. That was, that's an old message. <laughs> that, so, yeah, that was from the week before. I was like, oh, I didn't yeah. send out anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. I, once I hit send, I'm like, oh, how do I take that back? Because I just realized that's oh, an old message. So, I see. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Um, no, it's been exciting because uh, I feel like... Um, you know, when I was trying to look at the whole property, then I was like, well, we should work over here. We should do this. We should do that. And I'm like, all right, stop this because I can't do, I'm, I'm, I've paralyzed myself by trying to look at too much at the same time. And okay. so by kind of condensing down and saying, all right, let's really focus on this particular area and, and really map out a final plan, okay. um, which obviously went through iterations of change but we finally actually started to break ground and that's such a rewarding that's feeling, exciting. You know? yeah. yeah 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 so cool. um i'm i'm you know really excited about what uh, the next couple of months will do yeah cool in terms of, of setting that up um so, so where oh where yeah, go you, ahead. what when you say breaking ground what does that mean like where are you uh so that front section where we're uh, putting the grapes in because the grape, mm. uh, the bare root grapes, you know, they're all, they came out, um, recently, um, mm -hmm. for purchase and they go like wildfire. So, um, okay. I actually was fortunate enough to find somebody that works on a vineyard. Uh, so he knows okay. how to set up the, uh, the posts and the, you know, and he knows how to set up table grapes versus vineyard grapes on the lines and oh. everything like that. So that has been, okay. And, you know, I mean, an absolutely priceless um, a bit of information and help. And so we, you know, got a, I, I have to say buying a rototiller in and of itself is a task because there's like 300 different kinds and 300 different prices. You, you have no mm -hmm. idea, you know, are you okay mm -hmm. with a $200 one or do you got to buy the yeah. one? You have no and idea one of those things you, are you know, really do yeah. the research. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, and so you're hoping you don't use over and over and over again, but yeah, you had to get something. Yeah. Right. Well, just to, to help us be able to dig um, some of the swales and stuff like that um, sure. it, versus getting a bobcat, which I, I can, can't really do, you know, so it, it has been, it's worked really well in, in small areas to be able to create um, some, a means of water capture and trenching down and that. So we're setting up um, where the grapes are going to go and then working with the land so that we can hold that water in and then the uh, 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 ground cover over that and then put some um, straw on top of that to keep that okay uh, yeah keep that in place uh, until that ground cover can kind of grow up so sure, um, sure so that that's kind of our first section and then we're going to move to that middle section where I want to build up a wall create a, a swale there and get some mm -hmm. blueberry plants growing in there to hold that water there around those big oak trees uh, mm -hmm. and then put a bunch of pollinators down below. And thankfully in that last section, I forget what the plant was, but there's a certain type of pollinator ground cover that has is a late bloomer, which I okay. think would be great in terms of um, providing food for the hummingbirds and the bees, you know what I mean? 
um, yeah, late blooming them. plants and, and giving them a, a food source later. Because I see them flying around all looking for the one or two little flowers. And I'm like, I don't think that looks too promising <laughs> for yeah, them. Yeah, you can extend so, that for sure. Yeah. Is that yeah. something that you had in your, I'm just looking at your plant survey. So if my eyes were kind of darting around, that's what I was doing was pulling yeah. up your Yeah, your uh, I did put it in there. Uh, I, I don't know how to go from one page to another to see, but there is, I can, I can, pop over a little note on that that was a but it was one of the plant species that said it's it's great because it's a late blooming flower oh, okay. and extends okay. that that life um uh you know they the, the uh, food source for yeah. pollinators and that um cool. so I thought that that was valuable mm -hmm. hi Tyler yeah nice. <laughs> hi Tyler good morning <laughs> good morning have a small, <laughs> small crew this morning how are things going with you um, all right. I uh um trying to decide like how much I should include for my zone one because I have a pretty smaller scale and so I don't know how like what areas to pick out for it, but um okay, I know. Just pulling yours up here. I was thinking maybe just like the half of the backyard that's like closest to the house because um I don't know but... okay. oh everybody's using the internet in my house this morning so it's like <laughs> it's a little slow um so you're in your zone one I don't okay so you're trying to make some decisions about like where what part to design first yeah um do you want to pull up to know, like where i should draw the line for now with okay at least this. Do, you want, do you want to do a screen share and show us um, just, I just yeah let me see if i can uh I'll probably have to set the setting, change the setting so that you can do that. Um, advanced sharing. Here we go. All participants. Everybody can interrupt everybody else. There you go. Now you should be able to do it. Okay. Um... So, um, for last week's thing, I just did this corner here, but for zone one, I was thinking either like just like this area right here, mm -hmm. or I don't know. Well, your zone one is your area that you use most often, like most most frequently, right? Yeah. So highest traffic, highest access to, so, I mean, I guess it, on, on, that's the thing, on a very small site, often you're, you're basically all of it is, you know, a large mm -hmm. portion of it is zone one, small of it is zone two. Um, but yeah, I mostly go just like directly behind the house, like, the sides are not as often and the, the front is more uh, just like for leaving and entering the house. Coming in and out? Yeah. I would, yeah, I would go with, yeah, go with whatever area you're using the most frequently. Okay. Um, you know, and, and ultimately the goal is that you end up designing all of it. So it's kind of another arbitrary, like you got to start somewhere. So mm -hmm. if you have an, if there's an area that you like, oh, I've got some ideas and you're kind of inspired by it, just go with that. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, I totally agree with you. I know how it feels to just be like, where do I start? You know, yeah. and it's just like, you oh, just yeah. gotta go, all right, I'm just gonna pick this spot and that's it. I'm going to just start right here and, and do it. But one, uh, one person told me just something that resonated and he had said garden from the door outwards. So like 
you know what I mean? Like when you step out, that's where you're guarded, you know, like think about that space yeah. first, like maybe herbs go there and then you go, you know what I mean? And yeah. just to give mm-hmm. yourself a, a, a place to start. <laughs> so yeah. Hard. And something I, I struggled with a lot with the last six assignments, like, cause you know, there's so much like research and like how, how like, um, all the ways that like the different things can be integrated and it's hard to like settle on like okay just like pick some plants like you know mm-hmm. there's thousands of options and so like you kind of just have to pick you know as long as it fits well enough and you'll never really know how perfect it fits until you see how it does but yeah, yeah. and <laughs> that's not a that's really good advice linda um that's starting from the door because even if it's right now it's not an area that you use very much it is an area that you reliably, reliably go through and in and out right. and having that like regular kind of like something nice there can be kind of like a motivation to spread it into other areas. And it's like, you, it's, a, it's a place that you know, you're going to be going back and forth, um, you know, on some kind of a regular basis. So, um, I just want to make a note of like what questions come up so that I don't lose track. Do you find through your classes that uh, a starting point is kind of a common thread for people new to it in just getting their design going? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, because you could, I think often one of the things that you know you, as you you're going through the course you're picking up all this information and you see all these things that you can do and yeah. you see how they're all connected to one another so it's a yeah. sort of like gordian knot of like where yeah where do you start and you, you really just have to get good at like picking picking one thing like oh, okay if i don't get this in the ground you know if i don't get this started now i'm not going to get another chance till next fall Right. Or like, for instance, like rainwater catchment, right? Like, I mean, we're kind of, we're kind of past the like high priority window for this season. I mean, you could still catch a little bit more if you got something in, but right now is really the time to be getting seeds in or getting things started, getting things into the ground while there's still some of that moisture in the soil. And you can kind of kick, you know, some like really, you know, bumping up your water um, catchment structures kind of like into the summer, into the dry season. Now there's, you know, there's also things that you have to keep in mind about like, you know, digging into dry soil and all of, all of that aspect, but you can kind of kick that down the road a little bit. Whereas anything that's super high priority that needs to go in now, that can kind of help make your decisions. So thinking, right. yeah, just think about it in terms of like, okay, well, what's the, um, one, what's the low hanging fruit? Is there some resource or something or someone that I have access to right now that would make this easier than it's going to be you know, a month or two months or six months from now. And, you know, is there a deal on something or something I can take advantage? And yeah, what's just high, what's a high priority. So, right. um, you know. This is unrelated. So you may be like, I have no idea. I'm just curious though. Um, so I've been getting like my trees and my, you know, getting my plants and grapevines and from um, a nursery that's highly regarded here. Okay. What's the difference between that and getting it from Home Depot? Sometimes not a ton. Sometimes they're coming from the same suppliers, but often, Mm -hmm. you know, it seems like pretty consistently the smaller nurseries are taking better care of their plants. Mm -hmm. You've actually got some, and you've often got someone with actual specific plant knowledge not always right. certainly not a given um but you know that's generally why they get a good rep- reputation is they've got good plant care somebody with good local plant knowledge whereas a home depot you know Lowe's, you're kind of more likely to get somebody that's like reading off the label for you, you know, like that, right. that you're yeah. standing at the at the shelf and they're reading the labels for you like, yeah, thanks right. it's not help but no help um yeah sometimes they can get in different things than Home Depot would bother to carry because they're not catering as much to a, mar- a mass market. So right. okay. yeah, those would be my, right. yeah. 
or they're and they're more willing they might be more willing to get in something specialty you know like home depot might get in something you know be, might be able to get in something they can't just because they've got um a bigger supplier but your smaller nursery may is more likely to kind of have like that networking connection if there's right. something okay. really specialty um yeah the other thing is that home depot you know, like those those big box stores tend to have like kind of um just like a, a bigger more generalized supplier so they might be getting fruit trees in from like washington or oregon and bringing them down here and you're putting those in the ground and then like you know they don't work yeah as well. As well. yeah okay. whereas with a smaller supplier and again this is not always but Mm -hmm. smaller supplier may be more likely to to get something that's more local or be actually doing their own propagation which is a really it's kind of a really gold, real gold standard is that they're actually doing like local you know either local land races or just like these ones we know work in this climate um yeah. which probably less likely to get with a bigger store gotcha gotcha okay that's nice to support local Yes. Together. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, which, you know, yeah. that's kind of that's kind of all the stock, always the stock answer. But yeah, they actually there are actual likely potential benefits. Now, unless they're organic, a local a local supplier may not be any less likely, less or more likely to have the same kinds of like, kinds of like pesticides and and things. Mm -hmm. But they may be having less problems because they're they're paying more attention or they're you know they've got kind of more hands, more hands on deck, you know, watching, um, you know, watching out for pests or doing like plant care. So they're having less pest problems or go less application or less like just kind of blanket application on everything. Right. So that's kind of a crapshoot. That's if, you know, it, you're really, your best bet if you can is to just get organically grown plants from the outset, but that's pretty niche. I had an answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Well, there is this, I mean, there's actually not that big of a price difference either. So I'm like, well, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I prefer to, I, ironically, the, the local Home Depot has a really nice garden manager who I think is pretty knowledgeable. You know what I mean? Right. She's, yeah. she's like, oh, you want to get this? You don't want to get this and, you know, and that, and just let me know if you have any questions. And she right. was actually lovely. And so I'm like, is there? Is there actually a difference? I, I'm not, I, I wasn't really sure. Now, granted, the, the local nursery that I'm going to get every kind of fruit, fruit tree you can imagine and six different varietals of the, each, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that, yeah. and that works in this area. So, you know, I feel like they have a, a really vast um, selection so that particularly like for the grapes, you know, I'm able to get like eight different types of table grapes, um, oh, nice. bridles that work oh. in our area and that, you know, that kind of thing that you're not going to be able to get from, you know, Hope Depot, they have like red and green. That's what they're called. You know what I mean? Right, that right, kind of thing right. versus Moscato and, you know, and all these different <laughs> things. So, um, so it's, it's definitely better, but, um, I, I just, just on a philosophical standpoint, I was like, I'm, I'm not really sure if there's actually a different in, difference in the actual quality of the plant that's coming um, but yeah another thing actually that is, and it's funny this came up in the in the call with the other cohort which is there on lesson three I think mm -hmm. last week we were talking about this and um uh differences in like plant management and you know when you get like these great big sales at like you know Home Depot or Lowe's whatever where they're selling they're blowing everything out and sometimes the smaller nurseries will do the same but what you really want to watch out for is plants that like yeah plants trees vine anything that's been in the pot for a long time yeah so one of okay. the main questions was is it better to get like a five-year-old tree in a bigger pot or a bare root or like a one-year-old tree in like one gallon pot right like are we actually going to get four, that four or five years ahead and you often don't because that plant that's in the pot if there's one year one season where it was left out in the hot sun for a day or two like two just that little bit too long those roots are going to be stunted on that side so okay. you're going to wind up with a tree that grows up with like a flat side might actually not produce on that side 
And I mean, right. it, it can happen with smaller nurseries too, right? But this again goes back yeah. to that like hands-on. And if you've got somebody great at Home Depot, that's awesome. Go, you know, that's fine. Go with them if you're finding what you want there. Um, but yeah, this, in terms of plant quality, like if they've been left out, that's, you know, that's going to be a problem. And over an older tree has more iterations to have been mismanaged that way. Right, right, and right. when you're working on like these huge volumes, there's kind of more steps where they can fall through the cracks versus okay. like with a, with a smaller nursery. Um, and the other thing is that often when you put a, like a one-year-old plant in the ground next to a five-year-old plant, they're going to catch up in a year or two because their root systems haven't been crowded. Whereas the one in the pot, it's a bigger tree, but their roots are all like, sometimes they just can't break out of that kind of that root ball mm -hmm. shape. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you've got to chop it up more and then which sets it back. And so you really wind up just being better off going with like bare root or, you know, like a small, smaller right. younger okay. tree. Okay. Yep. Cool. Little things, <laughs> little things you pick up along the way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So because it's I... just the, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go ahead, oh. please. No, I was just gonna say I'm I'm glad you showed up and I'm and Tyler, if you've got any more questions, feel free to to throw them out. Um, but I was excited to talk to you because I'm we're going out to Tehachapi sometime in March to tour. Uh -huh. She actually does a consult, the Worthy Souls Retirement, the place with the retirement track, the the boarding track system, the, okay. the horse 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 okay. boarding. Yeah track yeah uh -huh. so I phoned her I phoned her up a couple of days ago and she does a consult for fifty dollars you come out and she'll walk you around for a couple hours gives you like a pile of information and links and everything um about oh, how wow. to set up a system so she and she was she was really nice um you know she was a little cagey when I was taught you know when I was asking her and she's like well what are you doing and I was like well I'm, I'm not setting up like a boarding facility like you know and we're uh -huh. in church, like we're you know we're well out of your range um, well, I guess she's still same county, but, um, yeah, so we're going to go out and just get some, like, you know, right on the ground, take a look at, at what she's doing. Where? There, so it's in where Tehachapi. Is it? Tehachapi. Yeah. Um, it is, I guess it's not due east, but it's like Southeast of where we are. So Ventura. So, um, kind okay. of like Castaic. So Alabama. South of like Ojai type, uh, down yes. at inner corridor okay yeah 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 um I'm just, okay I've always got to look at it on the map um you know it's like where it gets hot <laughs> yeah. yeah I um, I originally a few years back when we were looking for land I was looking at Ojai and then all of a sudden I was like um you know COVID hit and I'm like oh there's just nothing oh. for sale and what it was is there was nothing in my price range for sale everything went sky high oh yeah so, yeah yeah. yeah we're kind of in the same we're looking like northern california mm. um, like kind of mendocino area and when the last time we looked which was about five or six years ago kind of i mean everything was like still out of our price range but um i guess a lot of it's come down a lot because so many people yeah. bought up big properties and didn't realize how how remote they were going to be and the the mm -hmm. prices have kind of stayed the same but the the sales have slowed down so much that we're thinking it might just be, you know, a year yeah. or two and then they'll start coming down. So I don't yeah. know. Well, and Who I knows? think a lot we're, of the, kind the, of... yeah, the COVID people that, you know, left the cities to get this bigger land, they're like, Oh yeah, we're going to be out here. Then they look around and they realize, wait, what, what do we do on the weekends? <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And this some companies, so yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. companies are saying, mm, we need you back in. So, yeah, um, yeah, the yeah like, you know, I think it, everything, it, we're definitely at an inflection point. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just looking at the map here, Linda. So if, yeah, you drew that's, a straight, um, if you drew a straight line east from Pismo Beach and just about, yeah. due, I mean, really due north from Santa Clarita or due north from LA, like from West LA. Okay. You'd land at Tehachapi. So like Bear Valley Springs, it's kind of south on the 58 from Bakersfield. So the 99 goes straight down. And okay. just went down to Pismo yesterday um, to check out the monarch butterflies. Um, oh, yeah. Since they're doing their 
Uh, they're getting ready to have back now that winter's starting to wind down a bit. But um, yes, I haven't been oh, there when? before, and it was so awesome. To see, it was just like, <clears throat> yeah. It takes a while for your eye to like adjust to like actually see them if they're not like fluttering in the air because you know they're in these big like there's just like hundreds of them all like on the same like branch and stuff and wow I didn't hear I didn't even know that is it uh, how long um, that's great Um, are you where Tyler where are you what town um I'm in Santa Maria which is about an hour yeah yeah yeah. Santa Barbara yeah 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 so that's a drive up the coast yeah and it was a beautiful day yesterday too yeah nice yeah yeah, that's a, we had that in Texas with the, mon- it just killed me every time because they start the mi- migration, but they're going like through the highways and stuff like that. And oh. mm. uh, with the migration just, of what? The, when the butterflies start to oh, uh, yeah. uh, migrate and, you know, they cross these highways and uh, it just was, you know, it's just, it was only for a few days, but just so many are wiped out with just car traffic and that uh, it was a little brutal. But I, I did, you know, when doing that plant survey too, I think there, I don't remember and I don't think I put it down, but I did read about some plants that were really um, favorable for monarch bar- butterflies too. So I mm-hmm. thought about trying to incorporate something like that in the gardens too. Yeah, the, um, and the milk there. So that would be the milkweeds, and they're really specific. Milkweed. There's um, there's an invasive milkweed, and there's a there's a native milkweed, and you really want to really want to try and get the native one. And I think it's a narrow leaved. Um, let me mark that down to to find some of that out. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so the- it looks. Like- the grove that I went to, it's like there's a ton of eucalyptus trees there. I guess they they like that. Yeah. Oh. So to hatch a piece, like, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So a little bit southeast of um, Bakersfield, then. Yeah. Yes. Oh, here's from um, Xerxes. This is. Um, I'm going to drop a link. I'll drop a link into the chat and then it'll also be in the questions, the Q&A document. Okay. Did you guys uh, get a lot of rain um, during this whole deluge in your area? Yeah. In the past. And was there much damage or was it pretty well absorbed? And um luckily where our house is it's like higher up on the hill but um, Mm -hmm. the houses in like the lower areas got like totally flooded there's a few houses that are just um right they call it like they they're not livable in anymore they had to right like condemned or yeah yeah just yeah yeah that um in our area too that hundred year flood zone you know, with the, I guess that's what they call it. You know, it's like it doesn't rarely happen. They were yep. wiped out. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of those hundred year flood zones are going to become more, just more common. You're really looking yeah. at like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard because, like, you know, people see a hundred year flood zone and they think, oh, that's like once every hundred years. It's like, no, you could have. Yeah yeah multiple years in a row like, oh 100 years I, I won't be alive by then so i don't have to worry yeah yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah. yeah 100 years but that 100 today. years might start tomorrow you know yeah so, you know so yeah i don't know i i do have to say that um with any future property that we ever look at i will definitely go back to that original checking the elevations and seeing where mm. the water flows i mean we have been armed with so much more information, you know, because of, yeah. because of this. Although I found that um, when I went on, I was trying to do, I had back to an old map that I'd already calculated the elevations on because for some reason I wasn't able to do it on Google maps um, or the oh. earth. Uh, yeah, I on wasn't Google able earth? to do Google earth. I 
wasn't able to get the elevations, you know, where I, I kind of just tiered it all around and just found where the elevation lines were. Uh -huh. And um, what I would do is I just did like the line and then I just would move the cursor. And then as long as it stayed on that same elevation, I could dot it out, you know, and, and mm -hmm. go around. And mm -hmm. I wasn't able to do it any longer for some reason. Oh, that's interesting. There is something else. Um, I'm trying to remember what the specific issue. I've got. I tried opening it up, and it's just going to slow everything down. But um, yeah. Now I'm trying to remember. Oh, that it was the elevation profile. There's somebody else was saying they couldn't get an elevation profile anymore. Oh yeah, and well, it was yeah, like with the new say, yeah. uh, with the new update with the new update. Yeah, which is so tragic because that's. And that was kind of the whole point of it is to be able to see kind of what the, how the terrain is laid out. That's a big point of it, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna. Oh, you know what, why don't? Yeah, because I actually, I was talking to Dow a little bit about this and I kind of want to like, actually, I'm gonna try and do a share screen and actually get it. Yeah, I want to actually get this on video. So, um, oh, I've been doing so many grant reports. I'm like, I, maybe I shouldn't even do. I shouldn't do this on video because I'm like, <laughs> I haven't used it in so long. Yeah. Okay. Because it was right. Um, I used to. I use that. There's the line, I, oh, it's so tiny like on the there, line I can't tool. see. Yeah, yeah I, and, it is really tiny. So new path. And there was, <clears throat> and then, yeah, the altitude, I think it was, or something, there was some, you yeah. see that little section that says altitude. And then um, I was able to like do, start at a point, find like, say it's at 1100 feet, and then just keep tracking over and put a dot where it's still 1100 feet. And then like you see where these, uh, you can see on these oh. hills with the trees and you can see that it goes around. You were able to track your elevation the whole, you know, so that you could see this is the tier that's all at 1100 feet. And this is where, so mm -hmm. then you could see the contour of the land. I did it early on in, in my thing. And so I wanted to do it again on the, you know, the section map. And I'm sure. like, oh, I'm not able to do it. And that, it could be that I've just completely forgotten how to do it or I'm clicking on the wrong thing, but yeah. I tried everything and it could not get in the corner. It would continuously in the lower corner of the, the um, Google Earth page, it would show the elevation. So I would just keep watching that to see where the elevation was and then and chart it like that. And now I couldn't get it to give me an elevation. Okay. Um, Through that altitude tab, right? Oh. Up in there? Yeah. Well, it looks like, I mean, it's, it's pretending it's going to do it from a ruler. Yeah. Yeah. If you use the, if you use the ruler tool, it'll give you an elevation profile. Is it giving you the, the actual elevation? It is, yeah. Um, so you know, maybe I was just doing. Oh wait, okay. So we, um, oh yeah, I see an average max. Yeah. Wait. So, so what did you click on? So I'm. Yeah, I, I used the ruler. No, no. The it's, ruler. Yeah, I used the okay. so the ruler tool. Yeah, and then line path. I just chose path. Okay. Yeah. So All right. That's, that's, what, yeah, that's All right. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I. I yeah. You I was know. going to the wrong space, then I'm like, I can't get this. Okay, ruler. That's okay. That makes that, that I'm going to mark yeah. that um, to go back to okay, whoever it was. Um, I think it was Aaron. I think I saw a message from Aaron a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. I like your mug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I got these. I went with my husband on a business trip and yeah, these are hand painted oh, in wow. Mexico. And oh, wow. I'm like, and I'm like, I, I don't like to buy anything. I like this. 
off or whatever. I'm like, oh, to my husband, I'm like, I really like these mugs. <laughs> so I had to carefully wrap them in my my uh, suitcase. And they made it um, home. <laughs> it's it, uh, Harmony, right? Is that little town, that little artsy town just up the road or right near you guys? Yeah. You know Harmony? No. It's north of Cayucos. So it's just, it's between Cambria yeah. and Cayucos. Okay. Like um, on your way yeah. to go to, um, what you call it, to um, Hearst Castle? Uh, I don't remember where Hearst Castle is now. Mm. Oh, it's, I think it's south. It's just south of the intersection of the 46 with the one. Okay. I, I see. Ha do, kind of halfway in between Cambria and Cayucos. Oh. Right? Yeah. 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 Oh, great. So, um, uh, yeah, my husband and I, well, he, he and the friend of his actually used to go up there and then we went there a couple of times, but yeah, they've got those little like art shops and everything and they would okay. get into, they would get, um, these beautiful, like handmade pottery mugs just, and like, sometimes they were just off the, like the oops racks, but they're uh -huh. gorgeous. And they're these like, yeah. And you know, it was just like whatever was there, but yeah, we kind of collected those for a few years and then kind of gradually one by one, you know, the handles broke off or yeah, right, you know, right. Okay, right. dropped yeah. one. And, you know, so they've kind of, I think we've got one left now, but yeah, there was some really <laughs> nice pottery mugs in there. Oh, that's great. I'm going to check that mm -hmm. out then. Yeah, I it's need a neat to, little, yeah. neat little town. And it's, you yeah. know, it's good for like a nice day trip and go up a yeah. glass of wine. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, you got to make it up here because we're starting to crawl out of our house now and <laughs> when my, my daughter came up with, um, she's a, a dancer on a cruise ship and they're in training. So she came up with some dancers and we went out to a winery and just sat outside. And, you know, it's, I got to say, we moved to California and every friend of ours is like, are you nuts? The taxes and everything yeah. like that. And all I can say is quality of life, you know? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. pretty good. So, yeah, it's got to take advantage of this beautiful weather that we have out here. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and Lane made a comment, like we went out to Arizona a few months ago because um, our roommates have a condo out there. So they basically live in Arizona, pay Arizona taxes, Arizona car insurance, mm -hmm. but yeah. they make California yeah. incomes and they just go, they go home pretty much every weekend. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're doing okay. They're driving like a crew cab Ford 350 pickup, you know, <laughs> back and forth to Arizona. So I'm like, yeah, you guys can afford it. Um but it's it's funny because we went out there and we were like you know they one of the things that people really like out there is the lack of you know there's a lot less regulation there's a lot less environmental mm -hmm. regulations and when they was like yeah you can really see the difference because like you know 20 years ago california started putting in all this like epa regulations and litter laws and stuff and you can see the difference you know it's like it's yeah. a lot cleaner it's yeah. Yeah. There's just, there's not trash. Every, yeah. So it's, a, it's, it is, it's a, di it's kind of a different culture and it's, a, you, you kind of pay for it, mm -hmm. but it's nice. It's mm -hmm. a nice being yeah. a nice place. Yeah. So, yeah. I and uh, I mean, you know, I, I, we all work hard and I like to hold on to my money like anybody yeah. else, but pretty much everything that gets put through, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And yeah, I agree yeah. with that. So and um, yeah. actually, I read something about, um, you know, the cleanest states, there's a ranking or whatever. And California was actually ranked number six. And the only reason it wasn't higher up was largely because of San Francisco and L.A., you know, those dense right. urban areas. But the rest of the mm -hmm. state is, you know, it's imp it, I mean, it's it's pretty pristine. There are a lot of, you know, yeah. a lot of great, clean, beautiful areas. So, yeah. Yeah. now it gets frustrating <clears throat> when you you know like yeah. these guys went out they drove you know drove an hour to go hiking in the national forest and the whole thing shut down because you can't go anywhere because there's you know flood risk <laughs> it's like right okay right, you could be right. a little less protective of this like public yeah. you know this national area yeah but... yeah 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 indeed yeah i'm mm -hmm. i'm kind of um i don't have enough knowledge to be knowledgeable but i want to get more involved with the town in terms of what they're doing with water. Mm. Um, just go to more town meetings and just kind of just get a little bit more involved. Try to, you know, in, find a way to be more involved with incorporating some kind of more 
holistic practice in town development, you know, public yeah. areas or whatever on some um, level. I do you know a woman named Christy Christy Christy, I think is actually her name. Black Diamond Vermicompost. No, actually, and I'm, Tyler, she's I'm should so... be in your area too. She's um she's really interesting. Black Diamond what? vermicompost so they they they're doing like large-scale commercial worm composting and they oh wow i think they've been running for i want to say about 10 years now um get down there i'll put it in the i'll put their contact in okay they are pa oh they're in paso oh okay yeah a uh, really really nice woman i met her through a friend of mine amanda smith who was running an environmental testing company in slow um uh yeah but i have a feeling like i think she like she's really well connected and i think she does kind of like a lot of kind of you know like community um policy stuff and i'm not sure why right. that comes to mind but but they're really neat business and if nothing else just to like reach out and kind of learn more about what they're doing yeah. because they yeah. you know, and they sell really high quality product they've so they've got vermicompost compost okay. tea and they're really like about farm application. Um, yeah, no, that's definitely, I'll, I'm gonna go check them out. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just feel like, you know, I've just dipped my toe into this knowledge pool um, and there's just so much more to learn. So, you know, mm. but in whatever way, Lakota, no, um, mm. that um, we can uh, get involved. Yeah. Oops, I think I lost my AirPod. Um, just whatever way to help out. I'm sorry, Tyler, what? Oh, I was just going to say like, um, the, you know, with my mom being like a kindergarten teacher and I, you know, had been working in like a preschool for a couple of years, like, um, I'm just thinking of like, I had been thinking of all the ways that permaculture could be like integrated into the classroom and really yeah teach kids like sustainable practices and also connect with nature and learn more about you know environmental science and um there's like a, a lot of potential there that I feel like is not really being like seen and like a, you know mm -hmm. under I guess mm -hmm. learning yeah. opportunities and just even like um, I do have to say back when we lived in Connecticut, um, the, it, the school, the elementary school was set up like in three sections with a courtyard inside and inside of each of those courtyards they had, and the courtyards are big, you know, um, but they had like gardens and you go out there and garden and, and, and do all of that. And I, I just think like all schools should have like, kind of like a, you know, a wine why instead of regular trees, you, you don't have fruit trees and, you know, yeah. like incorporating things where kids feel like, oh yeah, well, plants can actually be a food source too and be able to, you know, kind of see that as a normal part of life. Hmm. The only thing I did learn from that is because I volunteered for a while and then I'm like, oh wait, can I cut this day short? Um, because they planted mint. And that is such an invasive plant that when it overgrows, it is, it's so hard to get rid of. So whatever you do, don't plant mint in the ground. <laughs> it's, oh. just, it's so, it's so invasive. It takes over everything. And I'm talking roots, you know. We, I think at the school that I worked at, they, we actually did have some mint, but it, uh was pretty well like maintained like there was a yeah. bit of overgrow yeah yeah we'll give it five years and we'll see <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it was it's funny because like for they use um like astroturf as like the ground for the kids to play on uh -huh. so, i mean it's not like any it's not the we the um, it's not gonna like take over it. But. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But it's just weird because it's like uh supposed to be kind of an outdoor play area, 
and I get like you don't want you know mud and stuff but um if it's like because I lived in Portland at the time and it's like if they're in like the city where it's you know they don't get a lot of interaction with nature like Mm -hmm. it's like they still like don't even get real grass or yeah 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 I lived in New York City for a while and it is it's it I mean it's you know the playgrounds are concrete and the building there's no there's no plant life around there um which is um, I said that for a while like they just had a outdoor playground but it was in an underground parking lot oh Oh. (laughs) and just like a little bit of sunlight like a slit of sunlight that could come in but it was like that's not outside like yeah you might be getting so but even the like little bit of like fresh air that's coming through is like just like from a street that's like above you you know like yeah with some exhaust fumes and yeah um actually I yeah I haven't gotten into this next section but I did watch all the videos on it and there was one um incorporate a lot of nature into the dense urban design which I thought, thought was really his name was like Pablo something he's like studied under Frank Lloyd Wright um oh. it's one of the videos and um but uh, and he's still alive a- as of the making of the video that um Andrew did um and because people in urban areas some kids just never see plant life I mean they they're never yeah. in like that lush kind of you know have that kind of lush experience and how that you know there are psychological ramifications mm-hmm. to that um so you know i think not to mention eye development it's really interesting when you start learning about the eye, kids eye development and being able yeah. to like develop a spatial awareness uh-huh and you know and yeah and be able to like develop develop like long range vision by focusing up close focusing at distance and continually switching which is what you do when you're outside whereas when you're inside Right. You know, your field of view is always shortened. Right, um, right. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, Tyler, there's some really interesting resource. If you're interested in like sharing any of that, there's really good resources. Matt Powers um, specifically, um, he kind of concentrates on soil stuff, but he's done some really good resources like the Permaculture Student, um, some of which he shares for free or it's really low cost. Um, but like, curricula specifically designed for permaculture so there's a lot of people doing that um the permaculture women's guild has some really good connections too um they've been pretty active for a long time i don't know if i don't know if she's still going Hmm? yeah the permaculture student um i'll find it And he's a neat guy. Like he's just, he's so high energy. It's almost overwhelming. Um, but you know, he's an educator and he does a really good job. Um, I'm going to drop the link in the same thing in the chat and in the, okay. in the document. Oh, come on. Call break. Oh. All right. Yeah. I'll look into that. We're so, you guys are so close. I know. So, I, was just, I know. Thinking about that, like, it's going to, yeah. We have, we have to be big kids after this. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm always, I'm always here. You're always welcome to like reach out if you've got questions <laughs> or you're looking for something or, you know, and you've got access to the course. I, they originally said two years and I think they're extending it to like kind of, you know, lifetime, which is like lifetime of the you know, the program or access, so. Right, um, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and of course, by all means, if you're ever out in this area, come, come yes. on. Okay. 
<laughs> it's definitely on the on the list. Yeah. Um, well, we have plenty of space too. We do have a lot of dogs, so we just can't be dog allergic. Oh. <laughs> no, definitely not. Not definitely not dog allergic. No. No, I don't think I would have survived my childhood if we were. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. So we're July twenty. 22 they will have access for two years and then when the course closes we can give them further access upon request so yeah yeah good deal mm -hmm. okay well i think i'm got to take my beasties out out to the okay. field to run and that thank okay. you so much hey tyler You're welcome good to see you sure. Bye. And uh, thank you again, Suzanne, for everything. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> All right. Talk to you okay, later. We'll, yeah. Bye. Bye. Yeah. I, um, I don't think I have any more questions. So. Okay. Maybe headed out too. I'll All think. right. Well, have have a good week. You too. Okay. Thanks, Tyler.